Once again, we're going back about eh, 15 years or so, this time in my junior high or high school years. I'm estimating here because I can't exactly remember when I spent a lot of time with this game. I just know I did. What game is that? Why, it's Blackthorn, of course. Never heard of it? Well, it's made by a little company called Blizzard. Know about them? Anyway, Blackthorn is, at its core, a typical Prince of Persia clone. You control some dude named Kyle who was originally teleported to Earth to save his life, as some evil demon named Sarlacc went and usurped control of the Fantasy Empire, effectively killing Kyle's father, the King. After Kyle gets a little more grown up, he is worked back to his birth planet to defeat Sarlacc and regain control of the throne. Now, if you look up the plot online, it's much more in depth, going on about birthrights, conflicting sons, etc, etc. None of this is talked about at all in the game, so there's no real reason for me to explain all this crap. The prisoners you find will only give you generic lines like free us, or kill Sarlacc, or beat the person at the end of the zone. So the storyline isn't fleshed out as much as it probably could have been. So how's the gameplay? Well, as I said, it's similar in style to the Prince of Persia, in which all of your actions are done meticulously and realistically. As such, animations are painstakingly detailed. Kyle himself looks fantastic, and although your opposing demons look a bit bland, the enemy rebels have some great details to them, from the long unkempt hair to the tattered clothing. Waterfalls, torches, and stuff like that also look great, yet at the same time the game keeps a gritty atmosphere. You start off in a bunch of dungeons, then go on to a rainy forest battlefield, to a large desert, and finally end up at the castle. The desert is really the only time your eyes get to check out some bright visuals, but even so, it's still keeping its dark overtones. It's really a shame that there's really only four environments, because I would have loved to see Blizzard's take on more level themes, as I was truly engaged in the fantasy world tool. As for combat, Blackthorn owns a hide or seek style of gun battles. Kyle wields a shotgun that is carried throughout the entire game, and each enemy you engage has different weapon types, from opposing shotguns to automatic rifles to handguns to even whips and bombs. You may feel that you are underpowered at times, but by clearing each themed world, Kyle's shotgun is upgraded. At first he loses the need to pump the weapon. After clearing the forest, the weapon becomes fully automatic. By reaching the end of the desert, Kyle is given explosive bullets. There's no upgrade after clearing the castle because, well, then you're almost done with the game. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Combat can be a strategic battle. Kyle shoots by pressing B, and if he wishes to evade the enemy, you can press up on the directional pad to press your back against the wall. By doing so, almost all of your enemy attacks will pass by harmlessly. Of course, your enemies will evade by using the same technique so you need to time your shots to make sure they actually hit your enemy before they attack you. Sometimes you'll be forced to come out of cover in between your enemy's volleys. One thing to think about, where are the characters hiding when there's no wall to press against? Are they just going all matrix style and evading the bullets? What makes combat a bit more difficult is that you have to manually holster or take out your shotgun. By pressing A, Kyle will switch between armed and unarmed. Your actions will change depending on this. Typically, your movements are much more restrained when your shotgun is out. When the weapon is wielded, Y attacks behind Kyle, B attacks to the front, X uses your currently equipped item, and A holsters your shotgun. When the weapon is put away, Y is used to run, B jumps, and X still uses an item. L and R are both used to cycle through your items, or you can press select to bring open the menu to show all your items at one time. In addition to these face buttons, you'll also come across ledges that you can lead to vertically. To do so, you need to have your weapon holstered, face the ledge, and hold up. In the same respect, Kyle can drop down ledges by approaching one and holding down. You have to make sure to give yourself enough time to complete these actions, as Kyle can be interrupted if attacked. Nothing can be more frustrating than trying to get the same level as an enemy if they keep punching or shooting you off. In addition, you will come across jumps that need to perform. At times, these jumps are longer than you can possibly make with just a standing jump. So you will need to back up a bit, start running, and then jump. You can cover a bit more space doing things this way, but it's also a bit more risky since timing can be a bit more difficult, and you don't always get the best running start. Movement isn't exactly free moving, and is instead made so that each step is almost like being on a grid. This means that if you press left or right, you will automatically move one step ahead, not just inch forward slowly. It's not a terrible system, but instead one that takes a bit of getting used to if you've never played anything like it. Your weapon isn't exactly limited to your gun. You will occasionally be given a hover bomb, which can be used to destroy steel doors or generators, flame bombs, which are mostly useful to attack the plants in the forest stage, and remotely controlled explosive bees, which are primarily just used to attack generators that are out of reach. Sure, you won't use these weapons to defeat your opposition very often, but the option is there. But here's the catch to that. It is possible to catch yourself in an unwinnable situation if you use items that are really needed to destroy something later on. 
For example, you might be given one hover bomb in an area. Let's say you accidentally throw it at a prisoner. Well, let's say that the final room of the stage has a steel door that can only be destroyed by that hover bomb. Well, you're going to have to restart the whole stage. One of the biggest complaints about Blackthorn is the lack of a map system. You will get lost, as every stage is essentially a maze. You'll have to go down several different paths, and normally we'll also have to backtrack before getting to the end of the level. Sometimes you'll even need to experiment a bit. Since the game moves room by room, you may need to place something like a levitating pad to reach a ledge out of sight. Also, since the game plays one room at a time, you could theoretically create a map for it on graph paper, making it a bit easier to progress through the game. Finally, almost every level is ended at an elevator, and by activating it, you move on to the next stage and also receive the password. The password system in the game is simplistic and perfect for the game. Since items do not carry from level to level, the only things carried over are your max health and shotgun upgrade level. Unlike many S games like Phantom Fighter and Battle of Olympus that have painfully long passwords, Blackthorn features a very easy to use 4 digit password system. Why can't all games be this easy? All you need to do is go down to the password area and use the directional pad to switch between characters. Again, very simple and very effective. You'll probably need these passwords too, because the game is fairly lengthy. Each stage could take anywhere between 5 to 30 minutes to complete, or longer if it's your first time playing it and you have no clue on where to go. There are 16 stages, and then the final boss, so you can figure that if each level takes 30 minutes to complete, you'll have to give yourself around 8 hours to finish it. Sure, it's definitely doable in much less time, but I'm just estimating here. You may also need the passwords because if anything, the final boss, Sarlacc, is very challenging. I know I had to try many, many times years ago to defeat him. I did it years ago, but he just pisses me off nowadays, and I couldn't defeat him. The issue with him is that Kyle's slow movement, it can be hard to evade Sarlacc's attacks. To make things even worse, most of his attacks cannot be avoided, even when pressing up against the wall. If I remember correctly, the easiest way is to just bombard Sarlacc with rounds while crouched, and roll out of the way when necessary. It's definitely not an easy battle, but it's a great way to end the game. One last thing. I don't understand why there's actually a screensaver included in the game. If you pause it and let it go for about a few minutes, the screen will go black and transparent circles will start moving around the screen. I don't get why it's there, but it is. Because of the peekaboo combat, realistic movement, and constant backtracking, the game does tend to contain a slow pace. That's not to say it's a bad thing, but if you're looking for a more action-packed game, you're going to want to look elsewhere. Blackthorn is more of a detailed, realistic action game with a few puzzle elements. I'm really impressed with the amount of control you have. I would definitely recommend it for everyone that likes these kind of games. If you do want to try it out, the PC version is available for free on blizzardsbattle.net. The link to it is on the screen right now, and also in the description of this video. Give it a shot and let me know what you think. I know I enjoyed it. Final score? 9 out of 10. There's Reaper. Always on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Reaper's Reviews. Happy fragging.